Hey hey, welcome to Half the Battle! Today, we're doing the exact opposite of main character May. So, minor character May? Yeah, let's go with that. We're taking a look at G.I. Joe's quintessential everyman, who's simply called Grunt. So meet Grunt version 1.5. Yeah, this is technically the second figure Grunt got. That means it was released in 1983 with no original body parts, well, except the elbow joint, I guess. Yeah, the very first 1982 G.I. Joe figures did not have elbow joints and were all re-released in 83 with swivel arm battle grip. I don't have the original 1982 one to show you. And actually, there is another difference, as the green patches on his upper arm are in front on the 83 version, but on the side on the original. Also, there's a slimmer waist piece. Anyway, let's talk about the figure itself. It looks like a generic soldier, which I guess is the whole point of a guy called Grunt. Though the same description holds true for a few other of the original Joes. Which was Hasbro's design choice of 82. I think this one looks nice. The head sculpt though? That, that is one ugly mug. It's reused a few times, but man, that is not an attractive face. Oh, in case you're wondering, I'm not removing the helmet out of fear of damaging the hair paint. This thing is over 40 years old, after all. Detailing is pretty decent for a figure from 1983, though there would be far more paint nowadays, like on the grenade on the chest and the pockets on the legs. His accessories, apart from the helmet, were a black M16 gun and a green backpack, simple yet elegant. And that's the way you could describe the figure overall, simple yet elegant. That head, though. Oh, and if you want to see it without a helmet... I got you, fam! Meet Grunt version 2, or Tan Grunt as he's known. This figure was also released in 1983, and again with no original body parts. He came with a Falcon Glider. Fans called him Tan Grunt because, get this, he's mostly tan colored. Shocking revelation, I know! And seeing his hair somehow makes the head look even worse, as he's got a beginning widow-speak thing going on there. The figure is rarer since it came with a big-ass working glider, so fewer were sold than the carded ones, and kids tended to play with the glider, leading to lost or damaged figures. He also came with a helmet. Honestly, I don't have any more to say about this toy, really. I like the original colors better. There is, however, more to say about that next figure Grunt got eight friggin' years later. So meet Grunt version 3. Damn, Grunt, what have they done to you? This figure was released in 1991 with all original body parts. The first Grunt to have that honor, as even the first one shared parts with the other 1982 figures. Okay, now, I'm no fashionista. Clearly! But even I know those pants do not go with that shirt. I don't think they go with anything that's worn outside of a circus. The torso looks fine, nothing special, and it's the only part of the figure that's presentable. Because for some reason, they made the head sculpt be constantly screaming. It's quite distracting and a little unnerving. This is just a weird toy overall. It's even weirder that it exists at all. But we'll get to that when we talk about the character. For accessories, he had a missile launcher, because the 90s, and a gun. I don't want to talk about those. What I do want to talk about is the helmet. Doesn't that look familiar? Yeah, it looks like Hawk's helmet, only in soft plastic and with a black paint application. Dude stole Hawk's helmet, so might tend to give it back to him if I find one. Overall, yeah, this is the weirdest grunt figure and the last one from the original line. Still, could be worse. May I present to you, worse. Meet Grunt version 4. This figure was released in the infamous 1997 G.I. Joe toy line as part of the Stars and Stripes Forever set. And boy does it show! We're back to having no original body parts as it's a repaint of version 1.5. Well, except the legs which are from the original Snake Eyes for some reason. This time the problem is the shirt. Does it look military? No! Does it look like any camouflage that might exist? Also no! The day they designed this thing must have been Bring Your Kid to Work Day, because it looks like a three-year-old tried to paint what he thought camouflage might look like. 
I mean, it kind of reminds me of a potted plant, so good job, I guess. Oh, 1997, you never failed to disappoint me. We're now entering the modern era and the year 2003 when Grunt got no less than three figures. The first one, with all original body parts, the other three paints of that one. I can show you two of them. One, version 5, came with the Battle Blitz, a really silly little vehicle I reviewed years ago. The other, version 6, came with a pretty gangsta Destro figure. They're almost identical, but there are subtle differences, like 5 doesn't have painted knee pads or shoe soles. And Grunt here has become quite the beefy dude, hasn't he? Check out those muscles! These figures suffer from a common problem that G.I. Joe toys of the time had. Namely, that their legs and waist are too tall compared to the torso. You really notice this when you put them next to a figure from the original line. The nice thing about these versions is that they still look like grunts, both as the character and as well a grunt. Once you add the helmet, you kinda get a Colonial Marines vibe from Aliens. Overall, I quite like them, they look good. In 2004, we got yet another take on Grunt as part of a comic book 3-pack. Meet Grunt version 8. This figure has a new head sculpt, but his body is reused from the 1994 Action Marine and Action Soldier toys. This figure is meant to resemble the way he looks in the comic he came packaged with, a reprint of issue 4, where he and Hawk infiltrate the Doomsday Prepper's compound. It kinda looks like the uniform, I guess, but it's not a very good match. It is the most beefy looking one out of all the grunts though, and after the last patch, that is saying something. There were a few modern body construction versions of grunts, but I don't have any of those. Well, except for the classic figure, the last to come out. It looks pretty good and is nicely detailed, but like all these figures, it's just too tall. There was also a classified figure released in 2023. I do want to bring up a few things regarding the figures I don't have. There were two more recolors of the version 5 figure, one of which was a Night Force version that um, didn't really resemble anything the original Night Force looked like. There was a convention exclusive figure in 2007 that honestly doesn't feel like Grunt at all. Though that set did have some excellent figures in it like Doc and women as Cobra Troopers. In 2008 and 2009, two Grunt figures were each part of two different Toys R Us exclusive sets called Senior Ranking Officers. Which has gotta be an in-joke or something, considering he's supposed to be a grunt. To add insult to... insult, the Rise of Cobra version of that is just a repainted Zartan figure. The only other two grunts were a Collector's Club exclusive and a Comic-Con exclusive. And those were the toys! To wrap up, what's my favorite figure? Well, to be honest, none of the grunt figures are great. Gun to my head, the 2003 version looks the best, so I'll go with that. But I do acknowledge the iconic status of the first two versions. As for worst, once again, not easy. Quality-wise, it's the 1997 one, but because of the overall weirdness, not to mention that stupid shouting face, I'll go with the 1991 version. Do let me know your own favorite and least favorite version in the comments below. Next time, we'll be taking a look at the character, starting with the file card. That's right, this is gonna be a two-parter. You wouldn't expect there'd be a lot to say about a character named Grunt, but you'd be quite surprised. So join me next time in this average character April or whatever. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody. And hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing? He's just a common man.